Wer rettet die Welt? Der Ö1-Festival-Podcast zur Klimabiennale Wien. Die Biofabrik Vienna ist ein Pilot. Biofabrik Vienna is a pilot project of the Vienna Business Agency and Atelier Luma in partnership with the Technical University of Vienna. We are trying to find out how recyclable building materials can be created here and the claim is a bit from the region for the region. So we're really looking at how unused resources within the city can be turned into building materials. Alice Jakobash is an expert in construction, design and fashion at the Vienna Business Agency. She's in charge of the Biofabrik Vienna pilot project on the site of the Klima Biennale at Vienna's Nordfest Bahnhof. Biofabrik Vienna focuses on the bio-regional design approach. Developed by Atelier Luma in the south of France, this method aims to transform unused local resources into various materials for architecture and design. Atelier Luma has a claim that says material is heavy and should be local, and expertise and knowledge is light and can travel globally. And that's exactly what happens here. Contrary to the approach of university institutions, which primarily conduct basic research, Biofabrik Vienna builds on existing knowledge and attempts to put this knowledge into practice. We also have three industrial partners on board. One is Wiener Berger, the largest brick producer. The other is Wiener Linien, which is one of the largest infrastructure projects in Europe. At the moment, 15 tons of mineral waste are produced every hour. And then there's the Struck Bakery. They have a huge number of outlets and are already doing a good job of recycling. But of course there's also flour waste, dough waste, which actually works quite well because it has great sticky binding properties. The evil gluten is actually a really great protein glue. The expertise of the partner companies flows directly into the development process at Biofabrik Vienna. For example, the excavated material from the construction sites of Vienna as new subway lines is to be used for the further construction of major infrastructure projects in the federal capital. And especially in view of Viennese traditions with Otto Wagner stations in the subway construction, one can also ask the question as a city, what would a modern city look like, for example? What do infrastructure projects of the future actually look like? We can no longer build them according to the old status quo. We have to think differently. And this, for example, is a suggestion of how this can be done and how we can also keep the resource in the city, so to speak, and process it again immediately, which of course has a completely different CO2 balance. In the workroom of the Biofabrik Vienna on the site of the Nord West Bahnhof station, there is a large cargo rack. It displays a number of products manufactured by Atelier Luma according to the bioregional approach. What you see here are textile samples, plywood samples, terrazzo floors, bricks. Everything you see here is from the region. For example, this chair that you see was created with an invasive plant, something that people are desperately trying to remove from the ecosystem because it's becoming excessive. But how can you use this instead of always dumping it straight away? The colours and fabrics that Luma exhibits in the biofabric Greek Vienna show how individual the design language of a particular region can be. This also applies to Vienna, says Alice Jakobash. So a Viennese cultural landscape or resource landscape looks different from one in the Camargue. What is also important to say is that this principle of the regional approach has so far only ever been tried in rural regions. And we as a business agency have said that it's extremely important for us to keep these cities fit for the future and to make them fit for the future. Then we can also transfer this to the urban context. What does that look like here? We may have shorter infrastructure routes, but we may have greater administrative hurdles because there are no longer any, say, farm to textile direct connections from the producers. Sagen wir Farm to Textile direkt Verbindung mehr gibt von den Produzentinnen. To this end, the city pools a great deal of know-how from universities to large corporations. Networks that ultimately help to implement the bioregional approach. 
What can then emerge at a local level is remarkable. These are terrazzo soils, for example, but they're now from the region around Lake Wörthersee. In other words, they're various mineral wastes that have been combined and ground. The idea of basically shipping rare stones around the world is absolutely absurd. We have so much mineral waste in Central Europe that it's actually absurd to think about how we came to think of a system the other way around. The question of whether the industry can work in line with the circular economy depends on many factors, says Alice Jakobash. After all, technology and production are precisely tailored to the raw materials that are then further processed. That's a bit like this issue of a research institution that perhaps doesn't know which machines are actually being used on site. And it's nice when we're suggested uh, mycelium concrete, but if it doesn't work on the machines, on the infrastructure that currently exists in the industry, it won't be used because the upfront costs are too high to implement it. So we offer alternatives where we say you don't have to change your chain at all. You just have to buy what you're pushing from the outset in a different way. And ideally, it might be even cheaper because you save on transportation. Then, of course, you also have an argument. The focus at Biofabrik Vienna is not only on shorter supply chains, but above all on more environmentally friendly production methods. For example, the company is currently producing its own bricks in the hall at Nordwestbahnhof. The aim is also to consider in which situations certain building materials should be used. Rediscovering old building methods, that's the approach, says Alice Jakobash. After all, centuries-old half-timbered houses were also built from straw, clay and wood and are still standing. Another material used at the Biofabrik Vienna is sheep's wool. Wool, of course, also has an incredibly sad history in the European agricultural landscape, so it's quite marginalised. Most of the wool we use comes from New Zealand and Australia. That's what Luma, for example, produced in her first project. The sheep in the Camargue, I mean, we're talking about merino wool, can't be used because they're not pure white and shearing and bleaching them is more expensive than what they get for the raw material. Alice Jakobash says that the prospect of implementation is important for all products created in the Biofabrik Vienna. The first materials will be installed during the Vienna Design Week at the end of September. The hospitality area there is designed with these new materials. This could be anything from the bar situation to to a lecture plenum or outdoor seating. It's not quite clear yet because the material dictates that. But the team is currently working intensively on it and we're already very excited. Another cooperation project with the Vienna Design Week is located in the room next to the Biofabrik Vienna. Design with a Purpose is the title of the exhibition, which shows objects and projects that question existing consumption systems and offer solutions. The exhibition includes projects that have been created in the context of Vienna Design Week over the last five years. Climate Biennale Vienna curator Claudia Schulze. Some of them are completely speculative, like a piece of work that was created for Lorenz Snacks, Future Chips, where the question was ultimately, how can we design potato chip snacks differently so that they have this happiness hormone character, so to speak, and at the same time minimize the impact that fried fat and potatoes have. So on the one hand, it's about production processes. On the other hand, it's about increasing the sensory quality of the chip to such an extent that you end up with a single serve with this one chip that is so great. So you don't actually need all the leftover packaging. While the future chips from Lawrence draw attention to the tension between morality and pleasure and are unlikely to be found on supermarket shelves in the next few years, design with a purpose also features exhibits that are already in use in everyday life. For example, the Laufen separating toilet. 
die die Problemstellung letztendlich beantwortet. Which ultimately answers the problem of how to deal with the high proportion of nitrogen present in the water. Because a great deal of effort is put into filtering out the nitrogen. And if you were to separate the liquid, you would separate a considerable proportion of the nitrogen very early on in the process. A significant proportion of the nitrogen is thus transferred to a separate water circuit. This key innovation, which has been discreetly integrated into the design of the toilets, is called the urine trap. Other design objects deal with waste products and try to show the value of raw materials. This insect breeding station is another very interesting project. It's all about the protein question. So, shouldn't we all eat more insects? And why don't we? Well, we don't, because generally we find them disgusting. And the designers ask themselves the question, if you could manage to grow these insects at home, in your own apartment, with a box, wouldn't this ultimately make them so approachable and comprehensible that people would have fewer inhibitions about putting them into the oven in the end. At the center of the Design with a Purpose exhibition is a shower that was developed for the Wurzlau thermal baths. Which uses plants to treat the shower water to such an extent that there is ultimately a shower water cycle that minimizes water consumption. You've been listening to Wer rettet die Welt? Created by Till Köppel and spoken by Julie McCarthy, Chris Cummins and Rosie Waits.